Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. We are starting our new series of tutorial and for our new tutorial we're going to talk about the ANSYS Warbench introduction. So for that we're going to go into the ANSYS program. For this tutorial we are utilizing the ANSYS 15. There is a all of the ANSYS Warbench versions up to around the version 18 are similar. The latest, latest versions are slightly different. They, they look a little bit more like space clean, but we are going to talk about those issues in the latest tutorials for now as an introduction. And in order to understand how the program works and the way it has been designed, and uh, this version is uh, perfect because it will allow you to understand all of the processes and all of the information is valid for all of the versions. So in all of the ANSYS Workbench, when you open the ANSYS Workbench program, you will see that uh, you will have this welcoming message. That the messages can be different, but they're just giving you some information. You can read about uh, this information or you can just ignore it. So we're going to hit OK. And basically what ANSYS has is a toolbox that's on the left that, that contains a lot of different components and a project schematic. Basically, ANSYS Workbench, it is not a program for simulation. What is in fact is a, is a program that allows you to administrate the different components of ANSYS. What, ha what happens is that ANSYS is a company owns or has purchased multiple companies, different companies that had different programs. For example, in Fluidflow, they have CFX, they have Fluent, they have Polyflow, and they have been integrating all of these um, programs into one workbench, which allows you to work with them in one environment or perform different simulations. It, it depends. For the structural analysis, for structural st studies, it has for mechanical studies, let's say it uses the ANSYS APDL. So actually you can see it here when you go, it says analysis uses the mechanical APDL. So basically for static uh, solving, for mechanical solving, it is in fact the same program as the ANSYS classic APDL. It just has a different interface. Then you have the component from here, from the toolbox, the most important are the analysis systems, which would be varying based on your licenses and your configurations. And then you have the component systems. Here you have a lot of other items. And if we look at the custom design or the design exploration or the external uh, systems, we have different items, but we're not gonna talk about them because we don't specifically need it right now. We want to just understand how this program works. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put a geometry module. We're going to bring a geometry model. So you don't double click here. You have to drag the component to one of these green dotted areas. So we're going to put this and create a standalone system. This standalone system is going to be a geometry because that's what we told them. And if we double click on here, if you have an older ANSYS version, you're going to get the ANSYS geometry module. And if you have a newer version and the license, you're going to have the space claim module. So this is the geometry design modeler. If you look at it, you have it on the bottom as a different program. So they're actually different programs. And that's the way ANSYS Workbench actually works. A lot of the components are separated on different programs. And the idea is that every program um, is optimized for its function, so it makes the user experience a lot easier. And that depends on the, it depends on what you're utilizing, what you're trying to simulate, but in general it works uh, fairly good. So here we have the geometry. As you can say, on the geometry it has a question mark. That's because that step or that program or that component is not fully defined. So here we're gonna go on to this geometry modeler. We're gonna create a primitive as a box, a zero, zero, uh, one cubic meter cube. We're gonna hit generate. We have it here. And if we minimize it here, we're gonna see that, yeah, the geometry has been created. So this allows us, for example, to create a static structural analysis. So we go, we put the structure, structural analysis here, the static structural analysis here. And if we do that, we're not going to have any links between this geometry and this, this analysis. 
this analysis is going to have its own complete definition. It's not, it's not going to share anything with, with the geometry that we had. So we would have, we, what we have to do is actually pull it and drag it but on top of the geometry. So once we've done that, we're going to have the geometry being shared and the static structural analysis being here um, defined but having the same in the geometry. Also, we can pull this, for example, this model analysis and share, continue sharing. We can share this geometry from here or we can share it from here. It will be exactly the same. What we're sharing is the engineering data. So that's the materials definition stuff like that. We're going to see, we're going to talk about that in a later tutorial and the geometry. Or in this the case, we can share more stuff. For example, we can go up to solution, but it wouldn't do it. The solution, it will get us the geometry. It will, get, it will use the same meshing and it will use the same setup, meaning the boundary conditions. The, if we have any forces applied, any restrictions applied, it will use the same stuff as it had here to perform this model analysis, which is very handy because if we want to perform multiple simulations, we can just link them here like we're showing you. Now we're going to show you what happens when you double click on this model. Uh, which opens the mechanical module. I'm gonna, gonna in the meantime, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the the geometry here. The program, this program, is a completely standalone program. It uh, it works. It, it can allow you to import files. It is not extremely good for generating geometry, but it depends on how you're used to. But it can do its function very well. So. As you can see here, we have the geometry, we have the workbench, we have the geometry, and now we have the mechanical model. If you go to a mechanical model, it takes some time to load. We have here the geometry, which is our solid that was defined in the ANSYS uh, before. We have the model analysis, this model analysis that we got into, and we have the solution and the solution information. If we go, for example, here, you'll see that we have the linked. This is a separate module because ANSYS will treat these two as a unit. I'm going back here. Here, sorry. It's going to take, use the C and the E as a unit because they're linked. They have more things linked. And it's going to use the D as a, comp as a separate module in which the geometry, the engineering data and the geometry are being shared. So if we look here, we're going to have two multiple mo models and we're just going to say multiple systems. So here we're going to have static structural C5 and model E5. If you go back to workbench, you're going to see C and you're going to go see the E. So you can rename, actually you can go and rename these components to have a structure and understand what you're actually doing. You can do that by clicking and, or double clicking on the name, sorry. And you can put simulation, simulation A and simulation B or whatever you want to do. And that, will, that way you will be able to perform all of these simulations properly. That uh, the structure, as I said, it works based on connecting these components, it's quite, it, it can be quite complicated and it can get, get quite uh, impressive, but it's basically ANSYS Workbench, it is basically just an administrator of all of the things that happen in these programs. It also requires you to understand how to work with this first program, how to work with this second program, because the results obviously get generated based on what you do in those programs, but it is quite handy to simulate especially shell and volume models. So that will be it for today's tutorial. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you do, please share our channel and like our, our videos. Thank you for your attention.